Hello again. Today I'm going to show you the full process of creating this pen and ink piece. I'm using Bristol board, which is a smooth and thin card, Indian ink, dip pens and ink liners. Hopefully, there'll be some good tips and tricks here for you, especially as I made a few mistakes along the way which can be avoided or fixed if you know what you're doing. To begin with, I created a very quick sketch, as you can see there, and the very first thing I will do is actually to pick up a watercolor paintbrush and with very diluted ink, add a little bit of tone to some areas. This is actually a really good cheat if, like me, you have the tendency to get a little confused in busy areas. I don't like to work with a very defined drawing when I'm using ink, so this is my way to keep things a little bit simpler for me. And this is why I don't like to make my drawings too detailed to begin with. My pen and ink work can sometimes look a bit stiff and flat, which only becomes worse if I'm only inking a very detailed drawing. Instead, when it comes to organic objects especially, I will do a rough sketch and as you can see there, I will instead hold the object or put it in front of me and keep looking at it as I draw. This helps me to achieve a much more fresh and spontaneous aesthetic. Now, I understand that it takes a bit of confidence to do this and it's definitely not a requirement. For example, it's not something I will do with shapes of people because I don't feel as confident with those. This drawing is more or less the size of an A4 and it still took me a fair amount of hours, probably around 5. Don't let the idea of black and white fool you into thinking that it should be fast. Rendering a drawing like this in mock making is going to take you some time and you need to build up those layers of value and tone just as you would a color drawing. So take your time. It's not going to take minutes, it's going to take hours. In these flowers here, I am using a 0.1 micron pen. I started with it because it's reliable and easy to use, but I quickly moved on to pen and ink for these more drawn areas. Especially because, as you can see, I'm having to move from a 0.05 pen every now and then, and just this having to move from one pen to the other ends up being a bit boring and time consuming. With pen and ink, even though you need to keep dipping your pen into the inkwell all the time, you do get a much more flexible nib and therefore a much more flexible line. I did my flowers in more or less three stages, though the order kind of varied. First, I add some general texture, then add tone and some block shadows and finally I get stuck into the details. I always have to be careful and stop myself from going too far because I really like mock making drawings to have quite a lot of minutia and I do have the tendency to overwork some areas, which can very easily descend into confusion and flattening of tones. I learned a lot of things about myself whilst making this piece. I hadn't done a full mock making drawing for myself for a really long time, and it was really helpful to go back and try to remember how it all works. First, because it reminded me of how long it takes. Um, especially in comparison to a watercolor drawing or an oil painting. Even though you're not doing layers and layers of color, just the fact that you are dealing with teeny tiny marks makes the whole process really, really slow. It's also much less forgiving of mistakes because everything is just black and white and you need a lot of patience for something like this. Another thing I learned about myself was that even though I used to find stippling so relaxing, I really, really don't like it anymore. It's just really boring to me. Still, it does work really well and it's a technique I definitely recommend. It's a really safe way of adding tone and detail. Um, it usually looks pretty good, but yes, it's a technique that takes a long time. If you enjoy it and can watch a series or a movie whilst you do some stippling, then this is probably a really good technique for you. So I would say learn a variety of techniques so you're able to decide both what you like to do and also what you need or what is most appropriate to the piece you're creating. The flowers took me a long time to go and I think leaving the details for the inking stage was a really good decision for me. But as I was saying, you do need to build your confidence with using pens. Personally, I do a lot of practice. I do a lot of urban sketching, a lot of sketches on the go just with a pen. And that has really helped me with my drawing because I have to stop relying so much on being able to use a rubber and instead embrace the imperfect nature of a pen drawing and accept mistakes. Also, it's all about knowing when that can work. For example, a flower is way more forgiving than, for example, a human face, because our brains are so wired to understand the intricacies of a human face. 
When I started working with a dip pen, things started to go much faster. And you can easily tell the difference in terms of quality and in terms of weight of line. Putting pressure on this nib has a much bigger effect than with a pen and also it affects the way that I draw. My angles become a bit more dramatic and overall I find it more enjoyable. So that I really want to talk to you about. Did you see that random splatter of ink? What happened there was absolutely a mistake. I have this really silly habit of playing with and flicking my pens and pencils when I'm drawing. It happens subconsciously and it's probably a silly affectation, but you know what's probably not a good idea? Doing that when you're holding a pen full of ink. The ink went flying, I got a bunch of drops all over my paper and my drawing. This is something that would have thrown me into a complete meltdown a few years ago, but the good thing about experience is that you learn how to fix mistakes and not panic so much. So learn to style it out. You can avoid mistakes and you can fix them, but you can't make them disappear no matter how angry or upset you get. So breathe deeply and think of a solution. A way of doing this is by making the mistakes part of your piece. For example here, I was going to make some texture with a wash and drops anyway. So I just had to make these mistakes a little less noticeable and add a few extra drops to make sure that it looks like, like it was done on purpose. It's really important to know yourself and the mistakes you're likely to make, as well as learning how to make things a bit easier on yourself. For example, I know that I'm more likely to make some areas much darker than they need to be, and I can be a little lazy with my preparation. So in case of the shadows, what I do is I try to make the main tones first very lightly, only leaving the completely white areas unpainted, and then I build each tone very slowly towards my darker shadows. Same thing with my paintings, particularly with watercolors. I work in a lot of layers. What it does help me with is that it makes it less likely for me to make a mistake that I can't correct. So if my layers are thin and light, then I know any mistake I make will potentially be painted over later, or at least be less noticeable later. But if they're not, then that's it. There's nothing much I can do. It's really important that you don't despair and don't give up if a piece of work is not going so well. And if you need to take some time off, be it a couple of hours or a couple of days from that piece, then go and do it. Go paint something else, go draw something else, and then come back with fresh eyes. I needed that time for sure on this one. You probably will have noticed this already, but I was so eager to start this drawing that I made a couple of big mistakes along the way that made my life so much more difficult. First, I started rendering the most complicated areas nearly straight away. This would have been fine if I had prepared appropriately for this piece, but I didn't. I didn't prepare my values, so I didn't prepare where the darkness and light were going to be. So I started rendering the flowers, comparing them to each other, and I kind of forgot that there was a whole person behind those flowers. And because the tone of those flowers ended up being really middle of the road, what's going to happen is that person is either going to have to be really dark or really light to create a good contrast. And since I wanted to use stippling for the skin, that would have just taken me hours and hours. Every piece of work needs areas of noise and areas of quiet. Otherwise, there is no focal point. I'm able to fix this generally later, but I must admit, at this stage, I was starting to panic. That's why preparation, compositions, trials are so incredibly important. Because the basis of your whole piece is a good composition, and if that is off, that's something that is very difficult to fix. It will make you feel more confident and so much safer to invest your time on a long artwork. If all else fails, crop the area that looks best and keep that instead. Artwork is not sacred. You can do whatever you want with it. If you need to crop it, then go for it. Now, the reason why I always ask my students to start with a mock making exercise is that it's so easy to get stuck with the idea that in a mock making piece, you can only use very neat hatching and cross hatching, and that's really not the case. In fact, using more organic marks can really make it look much better 
And sometimes that means making some marks that look like a little bit of random scribbles at first. In the flowers, for example, I am prioritizing showing the texture to making things really neat. It's all about depicting what's in front of you and sometimes accuracy is not the same as neatness. Also, the reason to get an art education is to be able to decide what you want your piece to look like and then having the tools to make it look that way without being restricted by the handful techniques you do know. Yes, you do need to show that you can control different media and use different techniques, but ultimately we want you to be able to let go and pick out the things that you like the best and that are most appropriate to each specific piece to make your work look what you want it to look like. I start mapping out where my darker and lighter areas are going to be. For stippling, I do use a fine liner because it makes it so much easier to have consistent and fast dots. I can also tell you that this is the part that I sped up the most. This takes me a long, long time. Doing the stippling part probably took me the best part of two hours. The way I set up the photo is I try to make the lighting similar to the lighting in my studio so that when I added the flowers, they wouldn't look too out of place. Still, that meant I kind of had to use my imagination when it came to the shadows that the flowers cast on the skin. Another good tip when working with stippling, when it's going into a white area, is to make sure there are a couple of stray dots here and there. Same thing with lines and hatching. Gives the sensation of blending things together. So, once I decided what I wanted my frame to look like, I am going to block it out with black. This decision is very much to accommodate for the fact that the body of the person is not as dark as it needs to be to give contrast. Having this dark frame, it makes the drawing inside pop out much more instead of just looking a bit samey. The flower escaping the frame at the end is also a conscious decision, because what it does is it leads the eye into the flower area to cement it as the focal point of this piece. So it's almost a little arrow to lead the eye into the middle. After leaving it for a couple of days, I finally had the courage to go back and add a bit more tone and stippling, and I cut around the frame. This was a worthwhile challenge for me to go back into mock making and refresh my skills. And hopefully you took some good tips and tricks on how to use mock making and how to style out and correct mistakes in a media that is really not very forgiving. Let me know if there's any technique or video in specific that you would like to see or that would be particularly helpful to you. Until next time!